Hey guys, good to see you again. I am back again today with another What Does a Professional Geologist Keep in Their Collection? I'm Tracy, I am the owner of Mini Me Geology and I've been a professional geologist for a very long time. I have a huge collection of rocks and minerals and they are all over my house. And people ask me all the time, what do I keep in my collection? So I thought I would start sharing some with you. So today we're gonna to look at three really cool samples that I love. And if you love them, you can get some samples for your own collection because these are super cool. All right, the first up is aragonite. This is an aragonite cluster. Aragonite is really neat. It is made out of calcium carbonate. They are typically colorless white, yellow, or this reddish color. And they form prismatic crystals that are sometimes twinned and form these rosettes. So this is a cluster and they call it a rosette because it actually kind of looks like a flower with all of those individual crystals. So what this is, is crystals that are all formed together and kind of crisscrossing around and they cluster up and form this beautiful rosette pattern. It's really neat. So aragonite um, is really interesting mineral. It has one direction of cleavage, which means it just breaks in a flat plane. It has a conchoidal fracture, so if you actually broke one of these, it may um, show like a spiral pattern on the crystal. That's what this conchoidal fracture is. It's kind of soft to medium hard. It's about a three and a half to a four on the most hardness scale. It has a white streak. As you can see, it's very glassy looking. So that's a glassy luster. Luster is what does the mineral look like when the light bounces off of it. Now these guys don't have a lot of uses though. Um, so typically it's for collecting, um, just uh, typically for decorative type items. But the really neat thing is the fact that these things will form these clustered or twin patterns. Um, and it is a, a little bit similar in chemical makeup to a calcite. So if you do have one of these, be a little bit careful with it because if you drop some acid on it like lemon juice vinegar or like a hydrochloric acid it probably will start to dissolve the crystal a little bit like uh, that does with calcite so now we're going to move on to carnelian so a lot of you may know that carnelian is a variety of quartz it's typically kind of oranges to red in color and it has all the same very similar type um, uh, uh, properties that a quartz does. It's a six and a half to a Mohs, um, seven on the most hardness scale. It has a white streak. It's kind of waxy looking. This is what the outside of a carnelian looks like oftentimes when it's weathered. So uh, what weathering means is when a rock or mineral is outside, the wind and the rain um, will kind of, you know, beat on it. And so the outsides can often look dull um, even when the insides don't. So a lot of times, um, I know there are a lot of people out there that like to get saws and they saw the rocks in half and see what it looks like. I am kind of old school. I like to get my rock hammer out and I will tend to just start cracking rocks apart to see what they look like on the inside. And I had a whole bunch of carnelian samples that were pretty big in size and I was curious to know if they were solid all the way through, if there might be something different going on, what was happening with, with all these carnelians and I had so many of them. So I took them outside and I started cracking them apart and what I found was this one. It was like this when it was whole and when I cracked it apart, it was a mini geode inside. So if you look closely, you can actually see little quartz crystals that formed a geode inside the carnelian. So I say carnelian is a variety of quartz, it's called cryptocrystalline. It means that you can't actually see the crystals, but this white in here is actually little tiny quartz crystals that formed a geode inside this carnelian. I was so excited about this one that it definitely went straight into my personal collection. <laughs> Now the last one I'm gonna show you, okay, so geologists, we love to go hiking, we love to pick up rocks. In fact, one time I even made my daughter uh, stop the car once because I saw a cool rock on the side of the road and she was mortified because I got out and picked it up. Um, but I wanted to show you two of my favorite marble samples. So marble is a metamorphic rock. 
It is uh, formerly like a limestone that's made out of calcite. So like the aragonite that I mentioned, um, sometimes you will see that these rocks will actually start to fizz or bubble if you put an acid on them. These I actually both got on field trips. So I got, this is a white marble. It is pure white, it is absolutely beautiful. And I got this from a riverbed in Montana when I was in college at field camp. So we were um, actually out mapping rocks and things and we were collecting samples of everything as we were going along. And this marble, I've had this one with me forever. It is, as you can see, it's very weathered on the outside. You would never know that it's that beautiful white color on the inside. So that is one of my absolute favorite and most prized possessions in my collection because I found this and cracked it open. It was absolutely beautiful. Then this other marble is very unique. I actually had not seen one of these out in the wild until a couple years ago. Um, when we have our professional geologist license, you have to do um, classes and things to keep that license current. And one of the things that we can do is actually go on adult field trips. And so we will go with a lot of times the guys from the Clemson University put on field trips for geologists and we'll go and load up in vans and go out and uh, one of the professors will take us to all these cool places and we've gone to waterfalls and neat outcrops of rocks and you it's awesome to get paid to go hiking and pick up rocks so if you guys are interested in that just let me know and i'll tell you how to become a geologist um, but this particular marble is a blue marble i'm gonna hold up really close so you can kind of see the color it is not often that I see blue marble, but this one was actually also along kind of a riverbed and actually got a bunch of samples of it. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful blue marble. So this, uh, this is one of my more recent finds on a hike and it was in Northern Georgia where we found this. We were kind of over near the Tacoa Falls area, if you guys are familiar with that area of the country. Um, but this blue marble was absolutely beautiful. So I snagged a bunch of a bunch of samples of that so typically when you are a geologist and you go on a hike make sure you take a backpack or pants with big pockets with you because you always end up coming back with a whole bunch of samples and they can get kind of heavy all right guys so that's it for today i will be back soon with another what's in my collection and show you some more of the goodies that i have on my shelves bye